What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Shy Skiller, back at it again with another video. Today, we're going to be doing something different. We're going to be doing the Otakon. You know, I'm going to be vlogging the whole way through. It's about, like, maybe 5.15 in the morning. Your boy only got, like, three to four hours of sleep because cons like this can't go to sleep because of the excitement. You know how it is. But, you know, we're going to go into Otakon. We're going to be having fun. You know, we're going to get some stuff done today. We're going to be doing some interviews, going to be doing some sketches. Really, the main thing that's planned is the interview. So we're going to be doing that. Skillet! Test, test, test. I'm testing this mic just to make sure I can hear my voice, you know, my succulent, luscious voice, you know what I'm saying? I don't even need to talk this close to the mic, like, ah! Sorry. As most of y'all may know, yes, I did go to KatsuCon 2023. Fuck, not KatsuCon. As most of you guys are aware, yes, I did attend Otakon 2023 with one of my best friends of seven plus years, close to a fucking decade, because we are just... Or just like that. Otakon, to me, was pretty much, it was pretty much like any other convention really. It's nothing really extravagant, nothing really different. But the surprising thing was we got there early as shit. Like we woke up at like maybe 4.30, 5 o'clock, got ready by at least six o'clock. Then we got there by at least seven. All right, I got all my stuff packed. I got the headphones, I got the tools, I got the white cheddar cheeses for the snacks, you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna go further get ready because we gotta leave out of here by at least like 6.30 so we can beat the traffic and also beat the lines by eight o'clock. So I will see y'all there in about maybe a few hours. As we arrived at the convention center, we stood there for maybe about a good minute until realizing that it was the line to get badges so we were being like stupid little poopy heads about this entire thing and we didn't even notice it until somebody called it out and said this is the line for badges the line to get registered and get your badges is on the other side of the building so not even five minutes later we get moved to the other side of the building so we can get registered and get our badges I wasn't mad, but I was a little concerned. We got here early as shit, and we were in line for about like maybe no less than like no less than like a minute, bruh. And then they just told us that we're in the wrong line because we didn't have badges. Oh, is yeah. this the line for badges? Okay. All right. Well, we're here. So here we are. We're standing in the line for maybe about an hour and 30 minutes until they finally let us in, right? While we were standing in that line, that line got progressively longer and longer and longer, bro. Like, that line got longer than the Chick-fil-A drive through <laughs> After that hour and 30 minute wait, we finally get let into the building. You know, security guards are doing their routine checks. They're saying, take everything out of your pockets, walk through the metal detector and stuff like that. And the surprising thing about this was I didn't get stopped and I had a bag on me and it was the bag full of like my tripods and stuff, you know, basic camera equipment stuff. So I expected to get stopped because one of the security guards pointed near me and I didn't even know they pointed towards my friend there. So they stopped my friend, but they didn't stop me. They just said, OK, just keep going. Don't stop. Don't stop until we tell you to stop. So I'm looking around. I'm looking at the security guards because I'm paying attention to my surroundings like a any person with common sense would right i'm looking around looking at the security guards i'm wondering if they're gonna stop me like hey you're gonna stop me i'm thinking this to myself right i was like hey are you gonna stop me are you gonna stop me are you gonna stop me they're not stopping me i'm sitting here like okay i'm not carrying anything you know dangerous on me i'm not carrying any weapons so i'm gonna just save a spot in line for me and my friend they stopped her for makeup they didn't stop me though All right, so here's a little update. We stood in the line for like an hour or two. It wasn't really that long. We got in fairly quickly, but um, what are we gonna do today? We're gonna do some interviews, probably just vlog most of the time. 
very minimum of people that we're trying to get is like maybe five. But I don't know. We're going to see how this works out. I'm going to be here until like 8 or 9 p.m. So we're going to see how this works. All right. So today I'm here with Benjamin Sussman. All right, Benjamin. Can I, you mind if I call you Benny? Ben, Benjamin DS. <laughs> I'll call you Ben. So uh, what's your favorite anime? Favorite anime? I'd say Yu Yu Hakusho, definitely. Um, Monster by Naoki Urasawa. Like that series is fucking fantastic. Um, uh, Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex, Bakano, Angel Beats, uh, quite a few like others, but most a lot in that genre. Which protagonist do you think deserves the most or less respect in Angel Beats? Angel Beats. Ooh, well, that's it was a very complex show. It turns out the main villain was not even really a villain after all. So I'd say like most of them, like the character, the side characters, they never really got a chance to shine. Their stories were cut off from the main anime, and it's only thanks to like the side comics that you actually got to know more about them. So yeah, I'd say like, um, God, suddenly I'm drawing a blank on the name um, TK. Like for one, who basically like he talks in nonsensical English phrases. He was like American act, voice actor, like study, like t using uh, working in Japan. You never know his history. You never know what motivates him as a character. So definitely those kind of characters you want to know more about that they just cut them right off. And it's usually the most interesting ones, the most eccentric characters that never seem to see much screen time. Okay, so on that topic of interesting characters, which one do you think is the most interesting? Uh, Angel Beats, honestly, every single character is like interesting because it's like a tragic story about how like these characters like lost like their lives and their like previous like existence in their like normal world. This is a transitional world that helps them to move on. So basically every single person has a tragic backstory and we only get to know maybe like five of these stories uh, that we get to see because just anime has no time for everyone like story. So love to see some spin-off ones where they had animated every single character's own like existence and how they finally moved on because just suddenly whoop, they're passed on without any explanation by the end of the series. So what do you think is the worst anime? Worst you can you can be as crazy as possible. Uh, worst anime, uh, certainly one that my friend uh, told me about just the other day. I don't know the name of the series. I don't want to know the name of the series, but it's about a woman who's working in the uh, underground, uh, forced into uh, sex <laughs> crime, and this, her boss or manager has a natural obsession with her and tries to like, find her throughout this underworld, Tokyo underworld, carving up pretty much everyone he comes across in brutal, disturbing ways. If you've seen Benjamin, that guy that was in the interview at Otakon 2023, please like tag his social media so he sees this because like I want to be fair to everybody because I didn't get his social media and I forgot to ask about it in the morning. So yeah, please do that. You know, it's a quick favor, quickie, little quickie, you know what I'm saying? So please do that. What brought you to Otakon originally? Uh, a lot of the Japanese guests, Haruna Ikazawa, Junko Iwao, uh, Yaiba, the concert, like, I was rocking out with my lights, uh, Japanese light sticks to that concert, and, like, totally going nuts. They had the camera on me, like, right in there. I'm trying to get back into the groove of things, because, you know, I've been busy, I've been doing a lot of stuff, a lot of things, you know what I'm saying? It's been a lot of busy. I haven't had a lot of time to sit down and watch anime fully. Last anime I remember watching was, like, maybe Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Okay. And then I'm trying to I'm trying to get back into Demon Slayer for season two and season three. Well, definitely check out Jujutsu Kaisen if you get a chance. They have one of the best fight scenes in all of modern anime. There. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got recommended that like a lot, and um, I got more I got more friends that are into that than really anything that I watch. Cause I like, you know, you like old school anime? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I watch the old, old school. So like, <laughs> it's like you say old school, I'm going back to Kaibutsu Kun and Marvel Fushigina Melmo. Jesus. <laughs> I went as far back as like maybe Cowboy Bebop or Fully Cooly. Uh, I'm talking about back to the 60s, so. <laughs> oh. Well, you know, there's a new season of Fully Cooly coming out that just premiered at San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, like new trailer, it's interesting so they go more into 3d style this time around which is basically polarized a lot of fans what surprises me is that they're still making more at the very least i would have thought they stopped at like fully coolly alternative i think it's more of just a general like at this point it's way for animators to experiment with those different styles and they tell a different storylines because it's pretty much where like a nonsensical world where anything can happen as long as like you're crazy enough to like, believe in that kind of world
This is only the beginning. The day is just started. So after that little interview with Ben, my friend and I, we both started walking around for maybe another two hours because again, none of the places were opened up by the time we finished that interview. So we were walking around from like maybe nine o'clock to like 10, 10, 15. So as we're walking around, we see a massive change in like the crowd. So there's a lot more people rushing in and stuff. And at around like 11 o'clock is when the place started getting a little bit more full. There are a lot of things that I hate in this world. Overpriced food that doesn't taste nearly as good as the price tag suggests. Ads that pop up out of nowhere. And that person up the street that I shall not say the name of. If you know, you know. But the one thing that I hate, or that I hated about Otakon, right, was the ridiculously long lines and the confusing lines too. Granted, there's a lot of people, there's going to be lines, it's a big convention, it's a big event, there's going to be a lot of lines for a lot of things. So I go into this line because I'm heading to Artist Alley, right? I'm going to Artist Alley, just going to take a peek, not buy anything, but going to take a peek. Going to Artist Alley, I thought there was going to be like a quick, oh, like quick reach around, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm going in a line, like I'm going the direction of where Artist Alley is, right? I assume I'm already in the line for that. So I wait in there, they telling us to go around back to the dealer's room and then come back to Artist Alley. There was a line that wrapped around the entire area where those two were. Oh yeah, and by the way, this was how the line was. Like, if you wanna know what it's about, like that way was going to Artist Alley and I think the other way was going to the dealer's room, so. Yeah, just a little, just a little tidbit of information for you guys if you weren't even there. Who are you, man? I'm Jonah. I uh, I do animation. Um, I do Photoshop work. As you can see, I like to cosplay sometimes. I'm I'm trying to make art that makes people go, wow, it's so cool, you know. I'm Toru, and cosplay wise, but me wise, I am Re. I'm an animation student at VCU, and uh, my I've been cosplaying for about two and a half years at this point. And my goal is to just wow people and make them go. Wow, I'll remember them for sure. Well, you're wowing me with that cosplay. I like that. Thank you. <laughs> so, question of the day is, how long did it take to make your cosplay? I mean, for me, aside from like ordering it, it took like, you know, a day. It just came in and I put it on. But yeah, I got it off of Amazon and then I had to try and deal with the lens fogging. So that took a little bit of time, but you know, in general, a day. Mine took two to three months to do. The dress is ordered, but I did have to modify it because one of the straps was sewn on completely incorrectly so i had to redo that and then the wings i made completely from scratch myself the tail is also i don't want to hit you uh the tail is also made from scratch. it's my own fabric pattern and everything and i painted it and i did all that you know putting my art expertise to use and that sort of thing and yeah it was a lot of fun but very very hectic i would definitely remake the wings if i got the opportunity to go. oh okay so you said two or three months yeah it seems like it like for new cosplayers to me i would think that would take like Five months tops. Well, I helped that my sibling is a master level cosplayer as well. So I get a lot of insight from them on mistakes that they used to make. So that way I can avoid them. So because of that, they helped me pattern and they helped me figure out how exactly the wings were going to work. Like I still did it all myself, but they definitely helped me a decent amount. What made you get into like conventions and stuff? Um, I guess around my 16th birthday or something like that, my parents took me to Comic Con. And that was amazing, you know, I just, there's cosplayers and games and comics and boots and everywhere. I was like, this is just Candyland. I thought to myself, I want to try and be like, you know, that guy over there who's got like a Spider-Man costume or a Batman costume one. And it took me a while to start, but, you know, I just mentally, I was like, I don't know if I want to do it yet. Um, but once I did it, I was like, wow, this is a lot of fun. And I want to, I want to do a little more, a little more, a little more. For me, I got into it because all of my friends were doing it at the time, and especially my sibling was doing it. And they invited me to this uh, con called Colossal Con East one year, and I was like, yeah, I totally want to go because I've been to conventions in the past, but I never got like invited to one that was like as party heavy as Colossal Con. And I realized that I really like talking to people and mingling at parties and that sort of thing. Just at a weeb function rather than just at a normal bar because everyone there is like a normie and they're going to judge you and everything. <laughs> so it feels a lot better to be able to be in a space with people who are like you and do that sort of thing. But of course, like, so you still get like creeps and whatever who like try to do shit, but what oh, can yeah. you do? 
lot of those. Why'd you kind of own a cotton? So uh, my friend's actually been trying to get me to go for a while. And um, it's crazy because before I came here, I'd actually been going to plenty of other cons. But I just, I guess I kind of forgot about this one and how far, like it was, it was in a, a reasonable distance for me. And he just, I guess he hadn't asked me in a while, but he asked me again. I was like, yeah, definitely, let's go. I've, I've been trying to, you know, go with you for a while. So here we are. And it's, it's really fun. I went last year, actually, and I thought it was a lot of fun. And my sibling was like, Ayo, hey, we're growing again this year. You want to come? And I was like, hell yeah. So you'd be a spot in your hotel room. And that's long story short. What's your favorite anime? Favorite anime? It's, it's definitely between My Hero and uh, One Punch Man. The animation, the, the feelings you can get if you're like if you're invested in the story, the characters, the character design, the character arcs. Like Uraraka, like her her character arc going on like in the last few panels of the manga, and I know I'm gonna see it in the anime soon. That's so cool. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, those two, I love them. I'm a big fan of Madoka Magica, and I also really like Mob Psycho 100. Okay. Can you tell me what Madoka Magica what was that? Madoka Magica is basically. All right, thank you for interrupting me. Madoka Magica is basically this anime about this sort of civilization where you can make a wish and you become a magical girl. However, the catch is that when you uh, get corrupted as a magical girl through strong, intense emotions, because all of these magical girls are teenagers who, of course, have strong, intense emotions, you become a witch. And the witches are what the magical girls actually try to defeat. So they're actually defeating former magical girls. And so the goal is that this one girl wants to end that whole cycle. And there's another girl who's trying to help her stop it, but she's stuck in a time loop. It's like kind of complicated, but I think it's a really interesting anime. And then of course there's QB, who's like the little like cat. Like you've definitely seen QB. He's like the little white cat thing with the long ears and like the hoops around his ears. Like that, that asshole. When you said time loop, it reminded me of, um, what's that anime? It's when a girl and her parents got trapped in this world and the, uh, you know, they started going through like a tunnel and then her parents turned into animals. I forgot what that was. I feel like I know what you're talking about because I've seen like a lot of time loop animes, but I can't put my finger on it because I just don't remember names of animes. It was something, I can't remember what it was, but it was something so familiar. I wanted to watch it. Okay, what is the worst anime to you guys? Sword Art Online. I hate Sword Art Online so much, just so much. It's so bad. The characters are bad. Uh, Kirito is a bitch. I don't like him. The main girl is like super strong and like cool first off, but then she's like dependent on her man, and it's really dumb, and I don't like it. I do hate that. Yeah, it's, really do that. it just like fulfills all my negative stereotypes of like sort of like a Mary Sue boring ass male protagonist that's supposed to like fill in the shonen fantasy, and it's just I don't like it. It's really dumb. There was this one anime I cannot remember the name, but it was just it tried to do this thing where they mix 3D and 2D assets, and that's not impossible. So I, I've done it, and I've seen other anime and, and animation do it but the way they did it it just looked god awful i just i cannot remember the name of it it was just like like there's literally one character was standing here another character standing here this character was in 3d this character was in 2d i'm like why did you think that that was a good idea like backgrounds and characters that's good or like vice versa if that's how it has to work but just like having two separate characters no not a good idea so what makes uh 3d anime like a bad idea to you 3d anime is not a bad idea in general 3D anime can be amazing if done correctly. Just, I mean, just like any real art form or, or like art direction animation. Um, the problem, however, is 2D animation, especially in anime, is usually all hand-drawn. So it's got that kind of fluidity to it. Whereas 3D, a lot of times you'll see the character just like, you know, kind of like almost T-pose or something. And they, there's just moments where they're moving around and they just don't have that, that 2D like, drawn like let me try to put an example to it if you draw a character in two different frames like let's say they're waving or maybe they're not even waving just standing still you can have a character in 2d hand drawn standing still and they can look alive because each frame is different like if you redraw the character so one frame two frame they, they've got a little bit of difference to them and that gives them a little bit of light but if you have a character in 3d and that you just you don't have to redraw because it's a model you just have the same frame it looks less lifelike and that's a lot of things that a lot of these animes or any other thing do in 3d it just they don't see that and they don't they don't change it for some reason. okay okay sorry for the long one today. it's it's all right it's yeah, exactly right. You're passionate about it. I respect that, really. So I just came up with this question right on the spot, right? If you could give any starting cosplayer any tips, what would you give them? Mm, that's, that's a little tough. Um, I guess 
one thing is don't be afraid to ask people to get pictures because I'm always afraid. I'm, I'm afraid to do that now. So I'll see somebody, I'm like, oh my God, I love that character and that, that cosplayer is doing a really good job. I want to take a picture with them or of them or anything. Try to jump out of your shell and ask people to take pictures because they probably want you to take pictures with them. That and, you know, try something easy when you when you start out. Don't, don't go for, you know, maybe the coolest costume you've ever seen before. Um, you know, try something simple and then build your way up to something that you might really want to do. So don't go to level 100 real quick. Exactly. <laughs> I'd say just have fun. Don't stick to canon. That's a really toxic old cosplay community thing that people used to say. Is that, oh, if it wasn't canon, it's not worth it. Have fun. Just do what you want with it. One of my favorite cosplays is so like different from the canon design, but people still recognize me and they still like it. And I feel so good wearing it, knowing that I sort of took this character and made them kind of my own as well. And that's super important. Also, the internet is your best friend. Don't be afraid to look for tutorials or anything. You're not any less of a cosplayer if you buy your cosplays with Japan making them because not everyone has the resources or the money to do that. And my biggest one is do not be afraid to ask for help, whether it be from other cosplayers or just like, luckily for me, my sibling is another cosplayer. So, oh my God. Luckily for me, my sibling is another cosplayer. So I'm able to ask them for help whenever I need it. But I'm sure on Instagram, if you have mutuals who are cosplayers, they will be happy to help you because most of the people in the cosplay community are very nice and they want to talk to you and they want you to recognize their cosplay and just hang out with them. Making friends is super, super important in the cosplay community. And it's like half of the reason why you even come to convention in the first place. So, yeah. That's very true. That's all facts for real. Because I know some people that would make the cosplay and stick to like what's canon in, in any anime game or show that they're cosplaying from. And it's like, dude, it's not all that serious. If you want to stick to your, you know, like sticking it, like get in a character and stay in that character for the whole day, be my guest. But there's a, there's a breaking point where you have to take a break, right? Yeah. And sometimes canon just isn't the best looking, in my opinion, depending on what it is. And also just, I don't know, I, for me it's just a lot less fun, but if that's what you want to do, if your fun is making it as canon as possible, then that's completely fine. Just don't shame other people for not doing the same. Yeah, that's true. I'm really blank on questions right now, but you guys can ask me a question if you want. Uh, let me think for a second. Um, what was your first con? My first con was Katakon 2020, like right before COVID. Oh, right. Like, directly right before COVID. I had went with like a group of friends cause they wanted me to go. And um, that was the day I didn't buy a ticket online. So I spent like maybe two hours in a line just to, just to pay for the ticket and stuff. That con was in the Harbor. And let me tell you, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't really a lot of places to walk to in there. Well, I'm just going to say Katsukon just seems to be getting worse and worse every year because of the amount of people that are going to it and how small the venue is compared to it. Like it was so crowded this year and just the staff were really rude and not following their own mask mandates and it was just so bad. But my question for you is if you could cosplay any character, what would you choose and why? If I could cosplay any character? Regardless of how complicated they are, regardless of your technical skill, if you could do any uh, like character ever. That's a good question, really. Um, see, that never really came to mind, but if I had a character that I could cosplay as, I would say Urokodaki from Demon Slayer. Cause I got the hair for it. Yeah, no, absolutely. I could totally see that and you should go for it. Oh yeah, if I had unlimited resources and money, yeah. No, and like I said, there's no shame in like, especially if you're a beginner cosplayer like I was, buying or like doing closet cosplays, there's no shame in that. You do what you gotta do, you know? Unfortunately, those were the only interviews that I actually got from that convention. But hold on, hold on. Calm down, little birdies. Calm down, little birdies. I will feed you the explanation shortly. Just give me some time. The reason why I've only gotten like maybe two or two and a half interviews technically was because I didn't really want to like kill the vibe with the way of how the convention was going because there was a lot of people and a lot of people were moving from one place to another so i certainly couldn't stop anywhere and that's kind of my that's really kind of my reason i didn't i didn't really want to like disturb like the environment you know what i'm saying so after those two interviews i couldn't really get any more because there were too many people and there was no place to do an actual interview except for that spot that i was at and the spot that was technically really in the clear by like 8 or 9 a.m. So I couldn't really like do it at all because every place was like partially filled and there was no vacant space for me to like record and stuff and do interviews. So 
yeah, you know? Fast forward a couple of moments, like maybe an hour or two after those interviews, I kind of recorded some random clips of myself. I don't know why, just, I, I don't question my methods, man. I don't know what I was doing. Yo, did, did bro just come straight out of prison? Jesus Christ. So I did get something from the dealer room. So I only got like one thing and that one thing cost like damn near $60. That's why I only got one thing from there because I didn't want to spend a whole brick on this whole convention, bro. So the most I spent was like maybe a hundred dollars. That's, that's the sword plus the ticket. I get mad when I have to explain simple stuff. Please don't let me have to explain it. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Satan, I can't remember, boss. Can I have a hamburger, please? You're gonna have hamburger, please, boss. Yes! 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 Yo! And she is a genius by putting holes in her gloves to, you know, interact with her phone. <laughs> oh, guys. Get rid of the body. Get rid of the body. Chop him up and dip him in acid and get rid of him. I think I found this body into my wait. <laughs> I think I found this body in my brand new Bugatti. I don't know where he came from. I think he's <laughs> fucking dead. I don't know what I'm doing, bro. Keep singing. <sighs> we need to bleed. We needed to bleach our fingerprints away and then burn him in acid until he fucking became. Okay, wait, I think I missed a step. I think I, re I specifically remember going back to the dealer's room, right? And then I straight up just dropped 58 doubloons on a wooden katana that was from Demon Slayer. In my opinion, it wasn't really the smartest purchase, but it was definitely worth it. After that whole convention, bruh, I'm gonna I'm just sum it up for you, right? Leg pain. After 12 hours of walking, I felt like, bro, I felt like my legs were gonna explode after that. Like, as soon as I got in the car, I sat down. I didn't feel like moving. I didn't want to go home that early. I didn't. But my legs were killing me. I couldn't stand it anymore. Take that pun back. Oh, take it, take it back. Take that pun back. And let me tell you this, bruh. As soon as I got in the house, I was never seen again. I fell right to sleep, bruh. I was too tired to even move. I couldn't even get up. My legs were hurting. I was then there walking like I was drunk. But above all else, Otakon was definitely worth the $65 and the two hour wait in line. Would I go there again for Otakon 2024? Maybe. If I have enough money and a lot of time on my hands, then yeah, I would. You know, because it was a good time and I had a lot of fun, met some new people, had a lot of fun with my friends, you know, caught up with some people that I met there. And um, yeah, you know, I would definitely go in there again. Hopefully this story time slash interview mashup video thingy made sense because to be fair, while I'm recording this at like maybe three, almost four in the morning, I don't know if this made sense and I was probably just rambling. <laughs>